Hi, my name is Mark Mahold. I'm a volunteer docent for the National Park here right on St. John. When you have the opportunity, come on up to Annaberg Plantation. This is the most well-preserved, most well-cared-for plantation on the island of St. John and absolutely the most successful in its heyday. Come on up and see us. There's plenty here. Be glad to tour you around. Everything you see here, with the exception of that bakehouse, is pretty much a snapshot of uh, 1798 to 1860. However, it's all built from 1798 to about 1804. That would have been taken the longest to build the windmill. Five feet at the base, five to four, 75 feet tall. And then, of course, the structures on top, which was the windmill. And that's what did the uh, crushing of the sugar cane stalks when they were after they were cut were being planted on terraced up there. 555 acres, 550 acres was terraced all the way there and then another terrace, 100 acres on both sides to supply support crops for animals predominantly, some for people. You had your animal mill running and you had the windmill running. The animal mill, that plaque says horse. No horses were running that thing. They're too valuable with animals, oxen, donkeys, mules, people which made more sense. So you bring it up here, you crush it. There's a kind of indication of how the windmill crushing mechanism worked. And it was like that. There was three rollers. You'd send mm -hmm. in the cane one time here and then out the other side to crush it. And depending on how many people or how much you're running it was dependent on how much juice was coming out at any given point. And there was, it would come out in the tr on a trough from a reservoir right there on that smaller arch. So that arch then will will open to a trough which ran all the way to the factory over there <laughs> right outside the window of the entry door mm -hmm. you can't quite see it from here and we lead lined those troughs too because we thought that was a good idea you know we were dead at 50 anyway so who cared you know, <laughs> it, it probably gave us some flavor who knows the bakehouse was uh, that's original um that not the bakehouse but a baking oven because by law you had to feed the workforce, which was 662 enslaved people, once a day by wow. law. But every plantation, any place, is always the cruelty level is always determined by the overseers operating it and the plantation owner. The plantation owner of this place, guy was incredibly wealthy. He was a slave trader himself, so where he made the majority of his money. He made money in other nefarious means also, naturally. But this was the time frame. This is what was happening. His house is actually built up there. See the tall tree. Oh, kind yeah. of a mass oh, yeah. the remains of his house. James Murphy, an Irishman of all things. Huh. He ended up buying, uh, after a hurricane, uh, 1,300 total acres from there all the way to here. So that was Annaberg Estate. That It was named prior to that, but and that was just one of the estates, but he called Annaberg the whole thing then. This bay here is called Leinster Bay, all the way into the bay over there. And that happens to be the county he was born in in Ireland. Sugar was it's king at this time. So they've tried on this island and a lot of the islands in the Caribbean because everything grew any place, even here where it's so bad. And I'll tell you why this is so bad in a second, other than what obvious you're seeing and that obvious. They, they tried cotton, they tried indigo, they tried, sh uh, they ended up with sugar because sugar was the most valuable product uh, and coffee, uh, a couple other minor things, but nothing really was profitable. Sugar got it. But the only reason Denmark wanted St. John anyway, they already had St. Thomas. And by 1733, they picked up St. Croix. Britain wanted St. John, Britain being a mile and a half over that way. And the only reason Britain wanted St. John is they could use that as a jump off point to take over St. Thomas, which was uh -huh. one of, if not the richest Caribbean port, period. This guy being as astute as he was, Murphy, he knew that within a short period of time, they were going to outlaw the slave trade, not slavery, but the slave trade. And that did happen, 1804, 5, and 6, and started getting enforced in various methods all the way up to 17, uh, 1808, when the U.S. Navy really got its feet when <laughs> feet wet, when they got <laughs> to do all the enforcing for that. So that was the big time frame. So he knew that his workforce that he had, he wanted to keep working. He didn't want him to be, he didn't want to whip him to death. He didn't want to do all the terrible things right. that you hear of, although those things did happen, and they did happen here too, they did 
doesn't happen at the frequency that some movies will let you think they did, which is important. However, again, it's the overseers that are controlling this, and these two overseers only for 662 people <laughs> who weren't here of their own accord lived up there. But you've seen concentration movies, concentration mm -hmm. camp movies, mm -hmm. promote prisoners to within, from within to positions of authority, trustees. It's exactly how these places work. Okay. You promoted the some of the slaves basically to bombas or drivers they were called. They were given perks to do that. Number one perk out of five that we've been able to come across is uh, food. Yeah, more meals. <laughs> right, which is, yeah, you want to eat to survive. The least popular was money, oddly enough, but not oddly enough because what do you do with it? You could buy your freedom, but mm -hmm. if you're at the top of the food chain, technically as being a head bomba, what are you going to do? You right. Can start a dot com or a dime store. One of the few luxury things or designs, and this is all designed by an architect from Denmark, the whole place, except wow. again for that big house up there. He had a welcoming arms entryway. You ever seen uh, old homes, plantation type homes, or uh, European places? They have two different. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the, <laughs> the way, the reason they did that is because it's, well, it's formal to come in and see these two wonderful things two wonderful entrances and the men would come in one side and the women with their long petticoats down past their ankles this is the important part would come up the other side and they did that so not only the petticoats and the other sides you couldn't see their ankles the men couldn't see the ankles from this side because that got us kind of going <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, most windmills if there were at least two stories and most of them would have been the under camera was great for storage, great for anything, great for a fireplace, which they had on the top also because you had to clean the rollers so the juice wouldn't spoil, of course. And underneath they could make more bread when they had to, if they had larger groups going to some area doing some job at one point. But unfortunately, those were also the attitude adjustment areas too. These weren't going well with the particular worker and that didn't suffice to get the attention necessary there is ironically a uh, dungeon over there. The ironic part is that it's underneath the infirmary. See the coral? Any place you see on a building from this time frame, mm -hmm. a straight edge or an arched edge, it's got to be either coral, coral or ballast brick. Because the main building material, this stuff, mm -hmm. this, this blue granite stone, you can't chip that. <laughs> that's and amazing. Little... Well, look at the piece up at the top. That's a keystone. Yeah, that's compass stone. That's impressive uh, that they stone. took the time to do that. That was necessary because they could uh, they could tell the people when they're moving the house basically up there on the to move the sail, take it to such and such a position because mm. that's north. Wow. That arch port up there, that was where it came out. See the wall? Oh, okay. That's where it came out of the animal mill there. there was... so this being a very, very highly capitalized place, the average or normal on this island, which had about 114 plantations, the bakehouse up there was probably the size of the vast majority on this island of actual factories. This is the factory for this place. That's how enormous it was, which is phenomenal. The juice that come in from a trough, it ended up in the center here to a clarifier. Clarifier would do what they do, which is dropping the heavy particles down, of course. And then they would move it by either trough again or by buckets or whichever method from there to kettle, to kettle, to kettle, to kettle. The far ends on both these sides, because this was a double rack system, is where the fire was. And it was a Jamaican train because, again, the fuel source was the spent dried sugar cane itself. That'd be the rubble distillery factor. Pot stoves and the uh, worm stoves are right up there. Wow, it's, it is incredible. Can you see back there?